Councilmember Dutton? Here. Councilmember Hamada? Here. Councilmember Santanis? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Coops? Here. Mayor Garza? Here. This evening will be led in our invocation by Councilmember Sunny uh, Santa Ines. Uh, let's all bow our head in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Uh, we thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Oh, most gracious Lord, we come to ask you for your blessings more than ever. As our city, our state, our nation, in the whole world suffers from this pandemic, we ask for your guidance, protection, and blessing. Please continue to watch over our first responders and their families so that they can continue to protect us. Please continue to watch over our medical professionals and caregivers and their families so that they can continue to provide us with the much needed care. Please continue to watch over the people who provide us food, medicine, utilities, and other basic necessities. Please continue to watch over our medical researchers so that they can find the cure and the vaccine against this coronavirus. We pray for those who died of COVID-19. Please welcome them to your kingdom and provide their loved ones with a much needed comfort and healing. We pray for those afflicted with COVID-19. Please provide them with the strength and healing that they need. We pray for those who closed their business or lost their jobs due to this pandemic. Please comfort them and guide them so that they can find alternative sources of income. And overall, please Lord guide us and give us the strength and the wisdom to get out of this pandemic stronger together as a city, as a state, and as a nation. We ask all this through your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you, council member. Beautiful words. Thank you so much. So let's move on to city council announcements. So I will start it off. As COVID-19 continues to spread, California State Governor Gavin Newsom issued a statewide shelter in place order on March 19th until further notice. The purpose of this order is to try and slow down the rate of a transmission of COVID-19. Essential businesses such as gas stations, pharmacies, grocery stores, and restaurants who provide only takeout and delivery options, as well as banks and laundromats will remain open. Other non-essential businesses will be closed. To learn more information about the executive order, visit covid19.ca.gov slash stay-home-accept-for-essentials-needs. And for more information, you can also visit the link that we have on our website for more information as well. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As a reminder, all Belfair facilities are closed to the public as a caution in the interest of public safety until further notice. In addition, the city is canceling or postponing city events, recreation classes through the, at least to the end of April or until further notice. Although our lobbies will be closed, our staff will be answering calls and emails. If you need to reach the city staff, you can please call 562 area 804-1424. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, Tim, Council Member Raymond Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, let's see, hopefully most of you have begun to receive your 2020 census in the mail. You will be able to respond to the census in three ways. First online, or by phone or by mail. The census is an opportunity to shape the future of Belfar 
as it provides vital information. When completing the census, you will need to include everyone living in your home on April 1st, 2020. Please do your part to, and, and participate in the upcoming census. For more information, please visit www.2020census.gov. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. If I could just make a, a quick note on that. Um, I, I'm really proud of our community regarding the census. In just two days, our community's response rate for the census has gone up from 17% to 27%. So I commend Bellflower for stepping up and I continue to, to ask everyone to continue uh, following Council Member Hamada's uh, request here regarding the census. So again, thank you. Uh, let's move on to Council Member uh, Sunny Santa Inez. Uh, thank you, Mayor. In relation to the COVID-19 pandemic, if you are 65 years or older, pregnant, or have a pre-existing health condition, you are at a higher risk of more serious illness or complications. It is important to monitor your symptoms closely and seek medical care early if they get worse. If symptoms worsen or continue and you need to seek medical care, call your healthcare provider in advance or in an emergency, call 911. If you have additional questions, please visit www publichealth.lacounty.gov forward slash media forward slash coronavirus or if you need help finding a health care provider please call 211 the county information line thank you mayor thank you council member great great words uh finally council member ray dutton thank you mayor garza here are a few tips that can help prevent the spread of the respiratory illness the do's or stay home. Wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue. If you go out, keep at least six feet distance from people and items. Clean and dis disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. If soap and water aren't available, use alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol content. And the don'ts, do not shake hands, avoid touching your face, particularly your eyes, nose, or mouth, to prevent the virus from entering your body. Do not go to your doctor if you're not sick. To learn more about the coronavirus, such as its background information symptoms and other resources, please visit the website www.publichealth.lacounty.gov forward slash media forward slash coronavirus. Now that's a lot of email there. And that's all I got, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Ray Denton. Okay, great. Let's move on to item number 10, public comments. Mrs. Stewart. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right. Let's see. All right. Now, this is the time set aside for the public to address the City Council on matters not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the City Council should come to the podium, be recognized by the Mayor, and state your name for the record. If you wish to address the City Council on an agenda item, you may do so by approaching the podium as we review that particular item. You'll be given three minutes to address the City Council. Great. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Do we have any member of the public that wishes to make comments at this point in time? Mr. Garza, this is Randy Stover, and I just wanted to let you know that this meeting is being recorded and let everyone else know on here that is being recorded. If any members of the public have questions, I will unmute them now and they can respond to you. But I will be remuting people to keep out the background noise. Okay. So those you. that are here from the audience, I'll unmute and ask if they have public comment and then return. Thank you, Ms. Stover. Do we have Ms. any members? Ms. McGinnis, do you have any? Ms. McGinnis, do you have any public comment? Um, no, not at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, as of right now, hearing none, so I am going to move on then from item number ten. So item number eleven, public hearings. Um, item 11A, Mr. Stewart. 
This is consideration of possible action to conduct a public hearing to consider. Did I miss it? You want me to start over, Mr. Mayor? Yes, please, sir. Okay. This is consideration of possible action to conduct a public hearing to consider the following actions. Adopt urgency ordinance number 1385, an urgency ordinance amending chapter 17.76 of the Belfort Municipal Code to update regulations related to the temporary uses and to add temporary vehicle storage provisions and read by title only, waive further reading and introduce ordinance number 1386, an ordinance amending chapter 17.76 of the Belfort Municipal Code to update regulations related to temporary uses and to add temporary vehicle storage provisions and I believe Mr. Corpus has a staff report for you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so BMC Chapter 17.76, it currently regulates temporary land use activities. Um, those activities include parking lot sales, Christmas tree lots, pumpkin lot, um, pumpkin, pumpkin lots, ground openings, and so on. Uh, the temporary land use is regulated by the temporary use permit process in Chapter 1776. The proposed changes in the ordinance would allow for temporary uses in the P zone, which is the public uses zone. It would allow for temporary storage of new vehicles with a temporary use permit. It would establish criteria for the temporary storage of new vehicles, um, which I'll review each of those standards in the next slide. The change would also allow more than 10% of the parking area to be used for the temporary use permit, uh, so long as sufficient parking is provided for the temporary use and the existing uses on the site. Uh, lastly, the change the changes would remove outdated regulations. The vehicle storage standards that are included in the ordinances um, consist of the following. Um, the temporary storage would be for new vehicles only. The temporary storage has to be operated in conjunction with a permitted automobile dealership in the city. The storage is limited to 180 days, a one-time extension of a maximum of 180 additional days may be granted by the director. An extension that would exceed 180 days must be approved by the planning commission. There's also some provisions to uh, that this temporary storage of vehicles be screened mm -hmm. from public view. This would be either through a fence or a wall in which the screening materials would have to be subject to director approval. Um, and then lastly, the temporary storage uh, site, it must have a designated loading and unloading area um, on, this, on the site. That kind of summarizes all of the changes to the code. Um, the recommendation this evening would be to open the public hearing, take testimonial and documentary evidence, and after considering the evidence, adopt urgency ordinance number 1385 by at least a four-fifths vote to take effect immediately, to read by title only, way further reading, and introduce ordinance number 1386 or alternatively discuss and take other action related to this item. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Corpus. Great job. Uh, let's move on to questions from our council. Mayor Pro Tem Coops. I have no questions at this time. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, council Member Hamada. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick question, Elizabeth. Uh, sure. So the total allowance for for all times that they'll be storing is a total of 180 days plus an extension if they needed it. So that's not an annual basis? Um, so let me clarify. So the temporary use permit, um, it, it, the storage would be for 180 days. 
you can have an additional 180 days. That's a one-time extension, but it could be longer than that if it's approved by the planning commission. All right. So okay, there's, um, it's oh. kind of two tiered. One would be the yeah. director approval and the next step would be the planning commission if it's for a longer time period. All right, okay, very good. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Amara. Uh, Council Member Santa Ines. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, following up on Council Member Hamada's question regarding the um, uh, vehicle storage. Um, so if, if let's say a, uh, uh, a request was made for 180 days and it was extended for 100, at least 180 days, and after that, they changed their minds, you know, you know what, we can we request more. So that cannot happen anymore, correct? Well, it is possible because they do have to notify us at least 15 days prior to operation. And so after, after one month, and then they say, you know what, we need, we need more time. So they're under this provision, there's no possibility because they're only entitled to one extension. That would be, let me just take a look at the language. That would be correct. So okay. the way it's written, uh, you're absolutely correct. It's a one-time extension by the director. But if they wanted anything over 180 days, they need to go to the planning commission. While so, it's still in effect. Say that one more time. So while, while the uh, uh, permit is still in effect, but that's once correct. it expired, then that's it. They're done. That's correct. Okay. So and they have to know, notify us prior to expiration. Prior to expiration. Okay. And then uh, this only per, per one location. No. So let's say a, um, uh, a, a vehicle company can say, okay, you can use location A, next time I can use location B, and it starts all over again. Uh, you know, that is possible. I don't think that was the original intent of the ordinance, but that is possible because the ordinance does allow vehicle storage in several zones in the city, provided okay. they go through the proper TUP process. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, if I might interrupt on this, um, that would be a policy call of the council. We left it open for that. That is not the intention of the ordinance, though. And I don't believe it would be the intention of this current council, but we left it open in the event that there's something unforeseen. So right now, the intent is only for one location. Correct. Right now, okay. one location per application, because there per are... Application. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, another question regarding um, um, the 10% uh, parking area. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of thinking about um, the way we, um, the parking structure is constructed. There's a possibility that on the top floor that events can, can occur, right? Correct. That's correct. Okay, so uh, without, without doing any kind of traffic study, um, an organization or individual can rent the top floor up to a maximum of 28 or some spaces. That's 10% of the total number of parking spaces in the structure. Potentially, um, yes, yes, potentially. potentially. Yeah. So envisioning that. So let's say, let's say I want to have a party and I want to use the, uh, the top floor. Um, so I can, I, can, I can use that and then we can cordon up 28 or some spaces, which is 10% of the, um, the total big, uh, parking structure. Yes. Okay. All right, very good. So I just want to clarify that. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Great questions. Thank you, Councilmember Santa Ines. Uh, Councilmember Dutton. No, I don't have any questions there, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank you, Councilmember Dutton. For me, um, I just have two of them. One is uh, maintenance standards. Uh, would, would that be incorporated at this point, or is it something that you, as a director, Ms. Corpus, would be able to incorporate um, per, sure. per uh, permit? Yeah, so part of the T TUP process does allow the planning staff and the director to incorporate conditions of approval. Um, that might, and the reason why there's conditions of approval, it's to help mitigate any impacts to the surrounding land uses. And so if that is a foreseen impact, yes, we can add um, conditions related to that. Okay, great, thank you. And then the last question I have is um, in, the, in the staff report in both versions of the, uh, the ordinance and the um, in the urgency ordinance, 
which would be, I guess it would be, in the ordinance, it would be page six okay. on the top okay. under, under J. Uh, line number two. Yes. Uh, is there any way we can add um, where it says dealership in the city? Would it be uh, appropriate to put dealership performing sales in the city? I just want to ensure that that if we give these types of permits out, that it's not for a sales dealership that's uh, performing sales outside the city. Oh, sure. Yes, we can add that clarification in um, if the council chooses. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll put that on to my colleagues and see if they agree with me or maybe they feel it's necessary that we have enough coverage. So, and also uh, I'll seek guidance from our city attorney to see. If, again, this is legally defensible. So. Those are my, my, my only two questions. Um, so my colleagues, any other further questions considering you heard the other questions? Mr. Mayor, I have a question. This is Dan Coops. Right. The, um, I'm looking through the staff report. Do we have to, I do not see it, it may be in here, indicating is there a certain hours of operation that will, they will be able to install and retrieve vehicles from the sites? Um, it's not currently in the ordinance. Reason being, it could change depending on the location. So where there's more sensitive receptors that are around the temporary use site, we could add time limits to it. Um, in other cases where there may be a site that's isolated with um, no residential around it, it could take place um, anytime. So that could be incorporated as a condition of approval as well. Um, I don't think there's a one size fits all for every single site. So I would recommend that we just include that as a condition of approval, depending on the location. I'm trying to envision whether or not car carriers would be utilized to deposit vehicles or if they'd be driven over there one at a time from the main dealership. Have you an idea on that? Maybe both. I asked uh, the one applicant who has expressed interest in it thus far, and he indicated both that it could be both. Okay. Uh, another question it piqued my interest when uh, we talked about 180 days. Is that a one shot deal whereby once you've exhausted 180 plus your 180 extension, can you take a year off from it and come back and do it again? Or is there any kind of memorial for that? It's a policy call of the city council how they want to handle uh, uh, permits as they're issued. We just want to make sure that it didn't go six months without review by the council at a minimum. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor Potent Coops. Anybody, any other council members that wish to have any questions before we move on? Yeah, Juan, this is Ray Dunton. Yes, sir. Hey, I, would, I would be amenable to what you uh, wanted to do with uh, the dealership uh, located with the city that's storing vehicles. It has to be that dealership's vehicle stored in the city, not in other cities. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. all right. If there's no further questions or comments from the city council, then at this point in time, uh, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. We make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. I have a motion. So I have a motion by council member Santa Inez and a second by council member Hermada. Without objection, that will be the order. Is there anybody in this meeting, uh, watching this meeting that would like to uh, speak and make comments regarding this item? All right, hearing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So move move. The public hearing, Coops. So I have a motion by Council Member Santa Inez and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Without objection, that'll be the order. Okay, gentlemen, um, any further questions or comments regarding this item? All right, so hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Mayor, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, make a motion to adopt urgency ordinance number 1385. An urgency ordinance uh, amending chapter 17.76 of the Bellflower Municipal Code to update regulation, regulations related to temporary uses and add temporary vehicle storage to the provisions. And also uh, uh, waive further reading and introduce uh, ordinance number 1386, an ordinance amending chapter 17.76 also, the Bellflower Municipal Code update the regulations temporary uses and add temporary vehicle storage to the permissions along with that one change that the mayor recommended. Great. I'll Thank you. Have a motion. Uh, uh, and so I have a second by Council Member Hamada. Okay, uh, roll call please. Council Member Dutton. Aye. Council Member Hamada. Aye. Council Member Santinas. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Aye. 
Mayor Garza. Aye. Great. The motion passes. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, let's move on to item number 12, ordinances and resolutions for consideration. We have none. Uh, item number 13A, Mr. Stewart. This is consideration of possible action to approve proposed artwork in conjunction with the approved sign design for Union Bank Shopping Center, southwest corner of Alondra Boulevard and Belfar Boulevard as part of the public art program. Mr. Del Longa has the staff report. Jim, are you there? Jim. Jim, are you there? I'm trying. Okay. Okay. I'm unmuted by the host. Okay. That did it. Okay. All right. Now I need to try and get this to make sure that the presentation goes. So let's give this a try. Um, here we go. We'll review the site. Once again, this is something we've seen a few times already. The subject site is at the southwest corner of Bellflower and Alondra Boulevard. It is approximately 2,613 square feet. A while back we had chosen, a, you guys chose a sign, and this is the sign in daytime, and this is the sign at night. And once we did that, there was a request by city council to go back and look at trying to incorporate some artwork with this sign. And we did that at the last meeting and that uh, artwork was not met very excitingly. So we went back and decided to, to get some other um, options. The cost for the sign will range between 78,000 and just under $100,000. And that includes construction docks, uh, contract administration, and the structural engineering necessary for the sign. So here are the, the uh, at that time that we made, we brought to you those sculpture ideas from the designer. Uh, we also offered up some options and those were using some of the uh, artwork that the city already has on tap that may end up having to be relocated at some point. One of those items was the city of Bellflower lettering sign uh, letters that are located at Flower and Flora Vista and Woodruff intersection. Bell the Cow, which is also right in that general area, just on the other side of the of Woodruff in the railroad right away. Oops, too far. Somebody's. And we also had uh, the uh, Journey to Market. Let's see if I can get that one back for you guys. There it is, Journey to Market. And that one is no longer at the historic train station. So I, I was asked to take, go back to the designer and have them uh, try to put these into a uh, scene and so that we could see how they would look with the sign on the corner of Alondra and Bellflower Boulevard. So here's uh, an idea that we could put the uh, Bellflower cast concrete letters there. Uh, this one features a hedge behind that and a flower bed in front of the lettering. The, uh, this would be a site plan of that. So you can see kind of top down how these things would be oriented and we can get a little closer look on that. And you can see that the sculpture would be between the flowering ground cover and the hedge. And this, this particular option uh, it keeps the grass that is currently there, the turf. Bell the cow, there's an example of what that might look like. That also has the hedge, flowers in front of the sign, and then they added uh, bell floor apple trees in the back. Those are rather mature bell floor apple trees. I don't think they would be that big right off the bat, but that would be an option as well. And this is a, again, the uh, site plan of what that might look like from top down. And then the journey to market sculpture in this one, we also have the hedge. I think that was pretty common throughout the whole, all three of these, but in this case, they've incorporated some decomposed granite around the sign and the sculpture, uh, similar to where it was in the past. And uh, this is how this one kind of plays out. 
from site plan view. So with those, and I'll bring that back on for discussion purposes, staff is recommending the city council approve the proposed artwork in conjunction with the already approved sign design for the Union Bank Shopping Center and authorize the city manager to execute contracts and forms approved by the city attorney to complete the artwork or alternatively discuss and take other action related to this item. And so what I can do, I'm sure you guys are going to want to discuss this. So I put those three options up on the screen for you and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delong. I like that, the fact that we're seeing all three of them because I know we tend to ask you to go back and forth, so good job. Okay, uh, with that, uh, let's see questions from our city council. Council Member Dutton. I definitely dislike the cow with the, the big trees that Jim said they were much mature trees. I think the last thing we want to do is get a, a row of trees of any size there for future visibility to the center. Um, I don't know, a cow doesn't, in my opinion, cow doesn't fit for downtown. Other than that, um, uh, I think the bellflower word looks good, but it's kind of like doubling. you got got bellflower on Bellflower Boulevard with downtown bellflower. <laughs> oh, if uh, I could uh, and, interrupt you for a second, yeah. Ray, that was one of the changes also uh, for the one that says bellflower. You might notice in the sign, instead yeah. of saying downtown right. bellflower, they took bellflower off and just right. put down there. Yeah, I didn't notice that. And then uh, I think the and then the less the less maintenance and the less costly I would guess would be the going to market one with the decomposed granite. It's got less less upkeep and stuff. So I think I would say that would probably be the the most economical one. That's my two cents. I'd like to hear my colleagues. Thank you so much, uh, Councilmember Dutton. Okay. Councilmember something else. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, of all the of the three uh, options. Um, I, my number one pick is just like uh, Council Member Danton. I like the journey to market because it provides a good segue to the two groceries we have right there and then shopping on downtown Del Flower and then dining. So it lends itself to a, a very um, nice segue. And um, my number two pick is Del Flower, but it's in the wrong place. I would, um, if the council agrees, I would like to keep the bellflower sign and save that for the train station. Because once we have the station, it's something that can basically a welcome sign when people get off the train. So that's my recommendation. Um, by the way, just minor thing on the, uh, on the hedge, uh, on if we decide to go for the journey to market, I would lower the hedge a little bit so that the head sticks out, so that it's more noticeable that there's there's a sculpture that right there. Okay, so anyway, that's my that's my recommendation. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Something else, Councilmember Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, first off, Jim, just a quick uh, question. Again, all 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 three proposals does include three more parking spots. No, they do no, not. Those are existing. That does not. No, this that is something we have to work out with the property owner. There. Oh, okay. Um, this is just for the art. That, All right. Uh, the three parking spots that are in the drawings just go to show that we could we could uh, fit All right. three more okay. parking spots. Okay. So that has that potential. That That's um, a step two of this. All right. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I would concur with uh, some of the past comments here. Uh, I'm I'm gonna just jump to it. Uh, uh, number three. Uh, with a lower hedge or, or without the hedge. Because I think from our uh, past study session, uh, we had comment about not, not including things that people can hide behind. So uh, I, I would encourage, if we do have an edge, it would be a much lower hedge. Maybe, maybe a, definitely half that. Uh, and or if they're smaller foot high type hedges. Uh, yes, I would say the, uh, the bellflower sign for another place and for bell uh like to for now see her go to pasture and uh just to, i mean just temporarily of course and uh again save her for another spot well those uh they don't have to be relocated yet but it's, yeah uh, yeah when they well, this, do the, yes yeah uh that'll be all mr mayor thank you thank you councilor hamada mayor for 10 coops 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I agree with what's been discussed. I'm surprised to think that that bellflower sign would be condensed to look that abbreviated. I picture it in my mind's eye where it's located to be much wider and longer and bigger. But that I mean, is that Jim to scale that bellflower sign compared they to what- tried to, They tried to do that as much as they could uh, with uh, using Photoshop and whatever programs they used. Would you like me to go back to that slide that has those letters yeah, on it? Yeah, was that where it is now, and I think that it, it looks pretty, pretty mm -hmm. large compared to that. Yeah, but it has two other words in it too. Right, we would this leave those video. words out in this case. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a, it. When you throw the city of in there, it's spread out, but just the bellflower uh, letters themselves, they're they're pretty close together. So why is Brett told me you're going to pissed in the middle of the meeting? What's up? I can't take any emails right now. I what did Jeff say? I didn't hear Jeff. What did he say? I don't know if he was he wasn't uh, he was on a phone call or something. Oh, okay. I thought he had something to do with this. Okay. But anyway, uh, thank you for that photo. Um, you know, ironically, all these uh, art renditions were site specific, you know, with the uh, Bell the Cow kind of welcomed you into the AE zone. Uh, obviously the uh, going to market statue was meant to be next to the railroad. Um, but I guess if I had to choose where we should end up with the uh, going to market sign, I agree with the mayor of uh, Sunny Sunny Nez that it does welcome us to the downtown. So my choice would be number three uh, will be our my first choice. Um, number one would be my second choice and uh, leave Bell where she's at for the time being. That's it, Mr. Uh, Mr. Coops? Yeah, did you hear my choices? Are you gonna do it again? No, no, I, I heard him. I just wasn't sure if you were done with your. Yeah, I'm done. That's okay. uh, Those are my choices. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh -huh. So for me, you know, I frankly, when I started looking at the options that were presented to us on the staff report, I, I actually liked number one. Um, I was also curious about the point that Mayor Pro Tem Coops made about the, the fit of the letters in there, but makes sense. And but in hearing the discussion today, I it, it completely makes sense. I, I the points that uh, Council Member something has made and then Council Member Hamada uh, about um, option three, I think, are are on target. So I'm in support of of, of uh, option number three as well. And I think the the comment from Councilmember Hamada on on maybe making that hedge lower it it, it makes sense. Uh, I think it'll give visibility to the stores that are behind there from this vantage. So I think it makes complete sense. Um, but yeah, not not too low to the point where we we may have children that want to leap it, right, and and risk themselves. But I think high, you know. Just high enough to where it prevents that, but at the same time allows for that visibility in the back. That would be my recommendation. But let's complete my comments. Uh, are there any further questions from the council? All right, so uh, hearing none, are there any comments from the public regarding this item or the, of our thoughts? Right, so hearing none, then uh, with that, we have our presentation before us. We have the options before us, gentlemen. Um, I, uh, it's up to your pleasure. Would, would somebody like to uh, make a motion on anything? Oops, we'll make a motion for uh, number three, the going to market being placed on the corner of Alondra and Belfar Boulevard. Second. Great, so I have a motion and a second. Um, without further discussion, uh, roll call please. Council Member Denton. Aye. Council Member Hamada. Aye. Council Member Santinas. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Aye. Mayor Garza. Aye. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. So let's move on to item number 14, which is a consent calendar. You have the items before you. Are there any council members that wish for an item to be pulled separately or they may have a, a, a conflict? Mr. Mayor, Mayor, before you start, I would like, staff would like to pull 14I. This is just not the right time to do it. We'd like to bring it forward in future meetings. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Stewart. So uh, my fellow colleagues, uh, items, uh, 14A, I mean, 14.1 uh, through 14.8 are before you. So may I'd like to pull... What? Go, Go ahead, ahead. sorry. So I'd like to pull up 14G for just separate discussion. I, mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay, so uh, we will pull item 14G for separate discussion. 
So items 14, 14A through 14H, except for 14G, are before you. Would anybody like to make a motion on those? Move the consent Mr. calendar. Mr. Mayor, move to it. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Dan. Go ahead, Dan. Move the consent calendar. Second. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Uh, without objection, that'll be the order. Uh, item 14G. Mr. Santinas. Uh, don't we take a vote? I'm sorry? Don't we take a vote on the consent? You just did. Are we uh, allowed we to did. do that? No, just, just a point oh. of clarification. Are we allowed to do that? You know what? You're right. Uh, let's do a roll call just, just to be safe. Because we're on video. Yes, you're right. So, uh, roll call, please. Uh, Councilmember Dutton? Aye. Councilmember Hamada? Aye. Councilmember Santanas? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Coots? Aye. Mayor Garza? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Santanas. Great point. So, uh, item 14G, sir, You're, the floor is yours. Yeah, just a question on this. Uh, what is this all about? I'm not, I'm not so clear in terms of what we're trying to do on item 14G. So, Sonny, this is uh, this is Len. Do you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. So this is this is the agreement that we have to enter with the flood control district for the portion of the Crothers Park stormwater capture uh, project that we're doing. Um, uh, there's a significant amount of work that has to be done in the actual flood channel itself because we're diverting the dry dry weather runoff that's in that channel into the capture system in the park. So this is the agreement that we have to enter uh, into in order to have that work done. So the agreement is with the flood control district so that they will allow us to enter that section. Correct. Okay, so um, in, in, uh, on page two, uh, the last paragraph, um, in terms of the construction window, so that construction window is from April 16 to October 15. Correct. Right. Okay. So, um, how about the the cost of that construction? Is that part of the whole project paid for by Caltrans? Yes, it is. And and that that time period is the only time that the flood control district will allow anybody to work in their channels. That's what they considered to be their dry season. They don't want anybody working in there during the, the, the winter or rainy season. Okay, so so just to, to reiterate, so basically it's fully funded from the funding from Caltrans. Yes, that's correct. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. That clarifies my question. Thank you. Okay. okay. So I'll make a motion uh, to approve um, item 14G. Okay, so I have a motion to approve item 14G. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second it. Okay. Great. So I have a motion by Councilmember Santinez and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Dutton? Aye. Councilmember Hamada? Aye. Councilmember Santinez? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Coops? Aye. Mayor Garza? Aye. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. You know, before we move on to item 15, which is council reports, what I'd like to do is because of the fact that we are undertaking this meeting in, in a different way. Um, I'm not sure members of the public that are still with us potentially would have liked to have made public comments, but because of the technology and figuring it out, maybe they weren't able to. So at this point in time, I'd like to see if there's anybody in the public that wants to make any public comments. Hello, Mr. Mayor, this is Randy Stover again. And I can see here that we have a few members from the public that I can ask if they have a public comment when I unmute them. Would you like me to move forward with that? Yes, please. Thank you. Ms. McInnes, do you have any public comment? Just that I think this was a great idea. It was, I, I agree with you on the decision that you made with the sign. And I hope we can do this more often right now. This is a great thing. Thank you. Thank you. Cheryl W., do you have any public comment? Not 
hearing anything, I'll remute her. I have a few more people here. Fred Taylor, do you have any public comment? No, I do not. This has worked out quite well. Thank you for organizing it. Thank you. I'm going to mute you. I believe that is all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I'm going to mute myself now. Great. Thank you, Ms. Silver. That was great. Thank you for managing that. Uh, so let's move on to uh, council reports then. Council Member Dunn. Many people. <laughs> Oh. Who'd you say? Mayor? Councilmember Dutton. Yeah, I have no comments tonight. Great. Thank you, Councilmember Dutton. Uh, Councilmember Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first thing, I, I want to give a shout out to the Los Cerritos YMCA. Um, with, with a federal grant, uh, they've been able to implement a, a early start to their summer fruit program. Uh, because of the time and need currently. Uh, so we started Monday and we served 150 um, food packs, which includes breakfast and lunch. On Tuesday, we served 500 packs. Uh, yesterday, we served 650 packs. And today, it jumped to nearly 950 packs. So when you add that all up and you count total meals, we're talking about 4,500 meals out there that, that uh, went to the school kids here locally. Uh, we'll be there tomorrow from 9 to 11 um, at the YMCA. We're in the process of working with the USDA to, to uh, move the location to Belfort High School Nutrition uh, Facility to, to utilize their parking lot. We want to make sure to keep a uh, queuing of vehicles off the street and uh, make it safe for everybody. Uh, so, uh, and also want to give some more shout outs to some community sponsors that have jumped in. Um, let's see, Hollywood Sports Park brought toys today to pass out to families. Um, let's see, the, the Community Family Guidance Center served as volunteers, uh, Serve Pro volunteers, uh, State Farm, Mike Chai, uh, served as volunteers. So I just want to shout out to everybody. Uh, things are moving smoothly and uh, uh, the plan is to do it un until the need stops. So um, uh, there's some great things happening here in Bellflower. Uh, the other thing, uh, Mr. Mayor, I uh, did want to mention that I, I declared my candidacy to be the SCAG District 24 representative for the um, uh, SCAG Regional Council. So uh, it's my understanding uh, there's a meeting next Wednesday, April 1st, 5 p.m. So I haven't heard the details yet how they're gonna do that. So uh, uh, I'll just uh, uh, keep apprised of that and, and, and also, uh, again, advise my colleagues. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Great, thank you so much for sharing with all that with us. It's so encouraging to see our community come out like that. Uh, so thank you. And also for letting us know about your candidacy, please do keep us posted. Uh, we've done that in the past. Uh, we're a solid team here. So uh, I can say for myself that I'd, I'd be honored to support you at that point in time. So for letting us know. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank, thank you. you guys. Best of luck. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Council Member Santa Ines. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to thank uh, my uh, colleagues in City Council, particularly the, the Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, for allowing me to serve um, in the sanitation district, District 3, uh, where I became the chair. And by virtue of becoming chair of District 3, I was able to join the personal committee. And it actually paid off already, I think. Um, the, last, the last two meetings we had, uh, we came to a decision to uh, reduce the, uh, the um, sewer connection fee significantly. So for example, for residential, a typical a single family, family home right now pays about $4,500 in sewer connection fee. Once the change becomes effective, uh, it will be reduced uh, close to 1,600. So it's a reduction of almost um, over 60%. And that was a lot of work and I think uh, it, it was worth it. So. Um, there's a lot of changes also that will affect the uh, uh, businesses, um, multiple residential uh, uh, construction. 
and uh, the target right now is for these new new rates to be to be become effective July 1st. So the the votes going to be coming to each individual district for approval, and hopefully each district will approve these changes because it will benefit the community, especially uh, uh, construction of residential and businesses. So. Uh, so again, thank you so much for allowing me to, uh, I know it's kind of unusual, uh, for allowing me to serve as, uh, as the alternate for District 3. So, but I think it's paying off for our, especially for our community. So thank you again, Mr. Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem and the rest of the council. Thank you, uh, Councilor Santanez. Uh, you know, I, I know it's unusual, but I, as I told you before, it's an honor to have you represent, as I know, for our city to be able to be on that influential board and to have the chairmanship, your leadership in there, it's a great representation of our city. So I couldn't think of any, anyone better to represent it. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. And so with that, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I wanna concur with what you said earlier about uh, Mr. Hamada's candidacy for SCAG. I'll stand with him. I just need to know what the mechanics are for supporting him by now through next Wednesday. So Ray, keep, keep us apprised of what's going on. So that if we need to be at a meeting or if we've got to be on uh, electronics like we are today, that we're there for you. So, yes, sir. Thank you, Dan. Um, uh, to piggyback a little bit on what was said earlier by Ray Minhamada, I got a call today from Jeremy, the, chair, the director of the Y, and uh, he conveyed the same enthusiasm that was submitted today by Raymond Hamada, that uh, they'd served so many lunches and it was a really a, a neat idea. I want to recognize that uh, our friends from the paintball park, Giovanni and Dennis, as mentioned earlier, showed up with a lot of toys so that any kid that was in the car or not in the car, if they were knew that they were getting a lunch, they got something to take home with them to kind of pass the hours. And to me, that's above and beyond. And I want to recognize the fact that the paintball park's always been there for our children and uh, they didn't forget us today. So uh, thank you, Giovanni and Dennis for uh, doing that and uh, it's just part of the Belfar brothership and kindredship that we have as we get through these troubling times. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pratem. Awesome, fantastic. Uh, so for myself, I wanted to announce that uh, last Thursday on the 19th, so a week ago, I actually attended a, um, a hearing of Judge David Carter, who is the, uh, the judge that's overseeing the settlement agreement, the homeless settlement agreement that our city uh, agreed to. Uh, that's the impetus for the shelter that we are currently in construction for. And um, he held the hearing to be able to have basically the same discussion he had with us uh, to be had with the county of Los Angeles and the city of Los Angeles. So uh, there's plaintiffs that have sued those two entities. Um, and so it was the first hearing. And I think we're going to start seeing a lot of movement regarding homelessness in our region because of that. So it's the start of things that are gonna set a lot of things in motion. And I think the fact that our council and our city attorney and our city manager had the foresight to be able to get ahead on this issue uh, to the point where we were cited at least 15 times during this hearing, the city of Bellflower does in terms of the leadership regarding this. Uh, I just couldn't be prouder of our team and, uh, and, and the support on this. So again, we're doing the right thing. And uh, to share with the public, um, we are absolutely on, on a fast track for our homeless shelter and uh, if everything goes well, we should be having that thing open here within the next uh, four to five weeks. So uh, again, thanks to everyone and I wanna share that with everyone. Related to that, uh, this past Tuesday, two days ago, uh, the, our commitment as a city council was to, for the local community where the shelter is gonna be located was to have a, in ad hoc, a working group of local residents uh, there to be able to interact and share the concerns with us um, as a city. And so we've come through on our word, we've created the ad hoc, and we had our first meeting uh, this past Tuesday. And of note, the mayor pro tem was there, joined us. Um, and also uh, Joe Hockman, our public safety director, led the meeting. Uh, we were there for a good 90 minutes. And I can honestly say that the discussion was fantastic. And it definitely gives me hope in terms of the future of the interaction and the relationship and the partnership that the city will have with the local community there. And I think the 
the residents that were there in the meeting this past Tuesday um, got a lot of information and I think everyone left the room feeling really good about the direction of the shelter. So with that, I'm not sure if Mayor Pro Tem maybe has any further comments to what I just added on that. No, I, I was very refreshing meeting to know that those that are live near and next to the shelter are enthusiastic about it. And I actually think that they believe that, that and I with them believe that it will improve their neighborhood and that is not gonna be a place that uh, they are gonna question what goes on there. Mercy House, the, our operator was there to answer any questions and they did a good job of that. And uh, no, I think it was a very, very positive meeting. Uh, we've come a long way and I can, I was very optimistic about the future of that endeavor. Absolutely, thank you, Mayor Tim. And so one of the things that came up during there was uh, hopefully before this facility opens, we'll have it, an open house so we can show the local community there the shelter in that way uh, it'll hopefully demystify what it is that it's in their neighborhood um, hopefully it'll open some some hearts and minds um, and, and so I just want to announce that so as we get closer we'll announce that and then the second thing was regarding the naming of the facility somebody asked what's what's the name going to be of this thing and so one of the things that I proposed um, was for for the residents to name this thing right so what I'm hoping for is that maybe we'll have a, a public contest to put out there and then solicit feedback from the public in terms of what this place should be named. Um, and so, as I mentioned during the meeting, this place is gonna be uh, special because it's gonna be restorative. We're gonna help people here um, improve their lives. And so I see it as a beacon of hope. And so with that, I'll ask staff to see if we can put a poll somewhere on our website and to solicit feedback from the community in terms of what this place should be named. So uh, so with that, uh, moving on, I wanted to thank staff. Uh, we are living in absolutely unprecedented times. Um, and if you see me smiling, it's because of the immense amount of pride that I have in our staff of, of the fact that we, we, we are depend so dependent on them, not only us as a city council, but our community uh, to forge our city forward, and uh, they have absolutely adapted. Uh, I can't say that it's been easy. I don't think it's been easy on any of us, but the fact that our staff has stepped up and in a short amount of time adapted and moved forward, uh, I just couldn't be prouder of everything that they've done. Um, one example is tonight of having this meeting in a format that we've never ever had it, um, and I think uh, I'm not alone in thinking that this thing went about as seamless as could have been done. So. Again, I commend our city clerk, our city manager, our city attorney, and our, all our staff for everything they're doing uh, to make governance and to make the operation of our city uh, about as seamless as possible. So again, a deep thank you for me on that. Um, thank you to our residents and our businesses. Again, we, we understand that we are living in challenging times. Um, we wish that we could just provide sprays to go out there and kill this thing. Unfortunately, that's not the case with the uh, uh, with the with the opponent that we currently have, but I think if we all do our part and and follow the public health guidelines that have been placed before us, uh, hopefully it'll be a quicker exit out of the situation and we can all go back to our normal lives. So, uh, to those residents that are following the guidelines, thank you. To those that are not, I implore you to please do that, um, and to the businesses as well. Those that are following the vast majority, thank you. To those that are not, um, I implore you as well to please heed the guidelines, because uh, I can only speak for myself, but if need be, we will take more stringent measures to ensure that everybody follows those measures. And while I don't think we're there, uh, I just wanna put it out in public that uh, I, for myself, am willing to go more stricter than we are right now. So uh, with that, uh, I'm not sure if there's any other final comments before uh, I move on. Okay. Mr. Sorry. Mayor, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, just a quick uh, note. I did want to recognize Belfar Kwanian showed up at the YMCA to serve also. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's very important. Okay, so if I have no more comments from my colleagues, then uh, item number 16, what I do is I'd like to adjourn to the next regular meeting of the Belfar City Council, which will take place as of right now at 5.30 p.m. on Monday, April 13, 2020. With that, by my watch, it is eight o'clock firm and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you everyone. Thank you.